Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of I Do Everyday Automation, where we talk about home automation projects to make your home smarter and your life easier. Today I want to start the discussion on home security cameras, home security software and hardware that I've used in the past and some stuff that I advise to small businesses and homeowners, as well as what I use in my everyday setup. So we'll start with the cameras, the different types that are out there on the market, and then we'll advance to a couple of other topics as it relates to the software that I use. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I chose three different cameras to show you guys today, and a device in the back is known as an NVR, which stands for Network Video Recorder. So as far as the cameras are concerned, from left to right, I have a dome camera, and this one is using a BNC connector. I have a turret camera in the center, this one can connect to the network via Wi-Fi, and all the way to the right, I have a bullet camera, which connects to the network via Ethernet using power over Ethernet or a powered adapter. So let's cover these guys in depth. Okay, so this first camera is known as a dome camera. It's easily identifiable by its clear polycarbonate cover, which helps to protect the lens and internals of the camera from normal outdoor elements such as the weather, extreme temperatures, dust and dirt, insects, and even from light damage that could be applied from, say, someone who's trying to intentionally damage the camera for surveillance purposes. Some of the drawbacks of a dome camera, however, are because of this clear lens and weather seal cover, it's not as easy to adjust. So you'd have to take this dome off anytime you wanted to make any adjustments to it or to change the viewing angle or if you were swapping out anything internally or adding like a SD card as some of these are capable of having internal storage. The model shown here has what's known as a BNC connector and also a power port. With BNC connector cameras, you usually have to have an external power cord, which means you have to run two cables, not just one. So that is one reason why I tend to shy away from BNC unless it's an existing system. Okay, so here's the dome camera at my front porch. I wanted to show this to you guys to show you an example of where a good location for a dome camera would be. Anywhere that's kind of low lying or easily accessible by someone from the outside that you don't want really tampered with would be an ideal location for a dome camera. The adjustments for it and all of the internals are secured inside the camera itself, making it a little more difficult for someone from the outside to access it easily or quickly to either block the view or change the viewing angle. Okay, so next up we have what's known as a turret camera, which can be characteristically identified by its ability to move more freely than both your bullet camera and your dome camera. This model actually has Wi-Fi built in and isn't really intended for outdoor installation. You would see models like this installed inside the home. These make great baby monitors or cameras for like your living room or areas where you may have a pet uh, because most of the models that require power all the time usually have a function that allows you to move them from the app or from whatever software you're using. Turret cameras like this one are often misidentified online as dome cameras. Remember, as I mentioned earlier, any camera that has the ability to move freely without direct interaction from the installer is usually a turret camera. Here's an example of an outdoor installation of a turret camera. Okay, so the last camera I want to cover is the bullet camera. The bullet camera is probably the most well-known and most versatile out of the three we reviewed in the video. That's mostly due to the small footprint of the mounting plate that's usually attached to the end and also the versatility of being able to easily adjust the viewing angles usually with an Allen wrench or some type of lock washer that's already on the camera itself. The model shown here is the HD PoE model which PoE stands for power over ethernet which allows you to run a singular ethernet or RJ45 cable from your PoE switch into the bullet camera. Now for that to work, you have to make sure that the switch you're using does have power over ethernet or that you have a device called a power over ethernet injector, which allows you to send, as the name insinuates, power and ethernet over the same cable. 
which greatly reduces what you have to run from the camera back to wherever you're going to be monitoring the equipment. So with that being said, out of the three technologies, BNC, Wi-Fi, and Power over Ethernet, Power over Ethernet is by far my favorite. It allows you to hide all of your wires and make for a more cleaner, more professional install without the need of an additional power source nearby. So to give you an example, here's my Power over Ethernet camera that I have above my garage. The cable goes back to my switch in my closet. I don't need a local power source. And I was also able to sand the exterior of the camera itself to spray paint it to match the paint that's up there now. So if you're not looking for it, you almost can't even see it. So now briefly, I want to cover physical recorders versus software based recorders. The device picture below is known as an NVR or network video recorder. You can also get these devices in the BNC version, which are not network attached. So we're going to flip this over and you can take a look at the back and see here we have four network ports for four cameras, which can be extended if you hook an external switch up to it. There's also BNC connectors here in the center for additional input and output devices. So there are quite a few different video surveillance softwares out there. The one that I trust the most and have been using for a few years now is Blue Iris. Blue Iris just works. And when I say just works, I mean it works with webcams, it works with cheap IP cameras, it works with expensive IP cameras, it works with IP cameras that work over Wi-Fi, some that even have their own apps that you're usually required to use. So I've been able to integrate it with a multitude of cameras and we'll cover that in the next video a little bit more in depth. I just wanted to give you the information so that we could cover all of the different aspects of home surveillance and the options that are out there for the consumer market. All right, guys, it's going to do it for the first video on the series. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the content. If you did, make sure you give it a like and hit subscribe down below so you see more content like this as I produce it. I'm also going to try to make sure I leave a link to everything we talk about in the video down in the description below so you guys can check it out for yourself or purchase anything you're interested in that we talk about in the video. In later videos in this series, I want to cover the Blue Iris software a little bit more in depth, show you how to set it up. I also want to show you some of the features of it that allow you to have some of the features like you would see in your Ring doorbell or some of your other subscription services like notifications to your phone, but without the monthly service fee. So stay tuned for that and make sure you guys keep an eye out for more content as I produce it in the coming few days. Thanks.